Hi there friends, welcome back to another video on paying it forward. It's been a little while since my last video, apologies for that. You know, the day job sometimes takes over the uh, ability to be able to record videos. But I was working on something recently and I thought it was a really good example to bring and share with all of you. I've, uh, like I've said before, I still have big plans for the channel moving forward. It's always just uh, finding a time to fit everything in. Um, so let's jump into the topic today. All right, so for the topic today, uh, one of the things that uh, sometimes happens in power-ups that you can need uh, access to is the ability to be able to generate uh, like a button or use a button inside of your application. Um, and um, what we're talking about here, this is specifically related to a model-driven application. Um, so in um, a Canvas application, a lot of the time we have the ability to um, you know, dynamically generate our own buttons. Uh, but when it comes to a model-driven application, we don't always have the chance to do that. Um, so what I'm going to walk you through is, let's say, going all the way from creating the model-driven application into applying a button in there. Um, and we'll kind of uh, go through step by step. All right, so let's get started. I've just created a simple solution here called the button application for the demo that we're going to do. Um, and what I've done is I've set up, uh, I'm just going to use the accounts table and I've just basically got that in a model driven application, uh, which we'll come back to in a minute. Um, what I want to add to the table is like a Boolean value or a yes, no is what it's also referred to. And what this will do is this will give us an indicator of how we can basically um, you know, generate a, an action based upon changing the value of the boolean from uh, uh, no to yes. Um, and that could be used as the trigger that we use our button to basically generate. So inside of the model driven application. Um, so let me just add a quick column to the account table. We're just going to call it um, agreement ready. Um, it's going to be a, a data type called uh, yes, no. Uh, for those of you interested to learn more about all of the different data types, uh, there's a link to a video that I recorded explaining all the different data types uh, up in the top right hand corner. Okay, and before we're finished here, we're just going to add that one into the form as well, into the default form that's being used. Um, we can quickly check here that it's being the account uh, form is the main one that's being used. So we're going to adjust this one here. And we're just going to bring it into the form as well. I'm just going to put it below the ticker symbol. Alrighty, so now we've got the uh, the application and the form ready. Uh, what, how do we create this button that we can use within the application? Because if you see, for example, at the moment, I have my application here. I've got AdventureWorks. But how would I change that, um, let's say, that field that we've just added, which is still refreshing in the background. Um, how would I add a button along the bar here, for example, that I could use to shift that to yes, to then trigger an event inside of the system. Uh, so let's get into it. All right, so where you need to come to is inside of your solution. Let's just go back on here. If you come to the application, hit edit on the application, you'll come to this screen here. Um, and if you go to the accounts view, you can hit the free buttons, edit the command bar, and then I'm going to edit that in a new tab as well. And what you'll see is it asks, do you want to use the main grid, which would be on the view or the main form? Uh, and we want to use it on the form, of course, because it's kind of within the form where we want the, that option to be available. We're going to hit edit. And then you'll see here, these are all of the uh, default buttons that are currently uh, available within the system. They're all set as read only. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit new command um, and we're going to use PowerFX, which is obviously, as I mentioned, the new one. Um, and there's a link to the documentation here uh, that I'll put in the description below um, so you can learn how to use it. Um, but we're going to hit continue. The first time you do this, it can take a little bit of time because it requires to create the component library um, to be able to enable this feature in the background. Um, so we have a new command. Um, before I do anything in the um, formula bar at the top here, I'm just going to give it an icon and a name. So um, agreement ready is the label. And then we're just going to pick an icon. Um, you can use a web resource as well, but um, let's have a look and see if we can find something that we like that's not already there. Um, let's use the little tick. So um, we have it there. We can even move it along. Uh, to be the first button that's available uh, that in the view. 
Um, and now we're going to go into the power effects. So when you, um, if you imagine you're in a record uh, that you have already open, um, what we want to do is to use the button to update something related to that record. Um, and we're going to use the patch command for doing that. So if you open the patch command, it will then ask you what's the name of the table. We're going to pick the accounts table. Um, and then because it's the record that we have open, it's the self-selected item uh, that we're going to use. Um, and then you, this is something if you're doing a lot of work in Canvas apps, you've probably seen it before. But you then open the uh, squiggly uh, brackets is what I always call them. Um, and then you pick the field that you want to update. So in our case, it's the agreement ready field and we want to change it to true um, so that it's kind of shifting from that. Um, IntelliSense does a great job here of obviously be allowing you to do this in, uh, in an easy way, uh, which is always great. Uh, you could add any other uh, commands that you want to have there, um, but we're just going to start with this uh, so you can see how it works. Um, so if we hit that, we're going to then save and publish because we've now got the uh, code set up behind it. Um, and we'll talk about some other things we can do in a minute once we've tried this. All right, so shall we see if the button works? So if I hit the agreement ready, you can see it's currently selected to no. If I hit the button, then you'll see it flips it to yes. And obviously because you can do a power automate flow where it detects a change on the record, um, it would obviously be something useful to use in that respect. However, you know, when we did this, it didn't actually show us, um, you know, any notification that would that are you sure you want to continue? Are you sure you want to uh, uh, shift the agreement to yes or no? Um, so we can go back to where we were um, designing the button and we can make some updates to that. So let's do that now. All right. So in the documentation, uh, there is another approach that you can use here uh, to be able to basically make the uh, button um, have like a pop up that will come up um, to notify the user. Um, and I'm just going to take the uh, notification here um, and basically bring it over. All right. So what I've done here is I've taken a small update to the information in the documentation, which is asking for confirmation. Um, and I've wrapped it within an if statement so that um, if the yes button is selected, it will obviously patch the uh, do the patch um, that we uh, specified before. Um, so let's save and publish that and now see what it looks like. All right, so uh, let's try it again now. So we can see we have the agreement ready button. If we select it, you'll see a pop up comes. Are you sure you wish to continue? If you select no, it just comes straight back out. If you hit yes, you'll see it then shifts the agreement to yes. So again, a nice little way of us uh, adding something extra into it. One other part I wanted to show you, um, which could be used as well, is obviously to use visibility to show the button if the person perhaps has certain um, permission or whether a certain part of the record is updated as well. Um, and what you can do here is use the uh, visibility show on condition formula and then use a formula to basically update the button here. Um, let's uh, do one that would basically only work, let's say, if, if the fax number is, in, is, is put in, um, in there. So let's put that uh, one in here now. All right, so what we've used for the visible um, is kind of another if statement. So what it's basically saying is that if is blank, the uh, selected items fax, uh, then it would be false. And if it's not, if it isn't, um, let's say, if it isn't blank, then it will be true. <laughs> so we would obviously uh, set the visibility in that way. Uh, so let's save and publish and then have a go with this new uh, visibility setting. All right, so you can basically see I'm back in the application and we don't see the button because there's no fax number uh, filled in. So we're going to take the same phone number, put it into the fax field and hit save. And now, as you can see, because we have a record in the fax, the button is available. You can click it hit yes and then the agreement uh, saves so uh, pretty cool right that you can use these buttons to be able to enable the experience and use it in this way all right so uh, let's do a quick summary of what we've learned here today so one of the key requirements uh, kind of underpinning this video was sometimes we need a button or an action inside of a model driven application that will enable users to be able to you know prompt a flow or to do an action um, and I think we've all known that, you know, trying to go underneath the buttons that are in the application of like hitting this, hitting flow, 
looking for the flows that need to be run can be pretty tiresome to the end user, especially if they don't know which flow they're supposed to be using. Um, so for me, one of the best things that I saw and researched was the ability to create your own button in the application. So the way in which you do this, you come into the uh, designer of the model-driven app, hit the three dots, hit edit the command bar, come into the um, overview of the command bar, create a new command. Within the button that you design, you can then specify formulas, both for your uh, button and for the visibility of the button. Um, in this case, using a patch command to update the status of the um, uh, a custom field that we added uh, to be true. Again, you can then use uh, Power Automate to then trigger uh, the flow based upon that. All right, so uh, thank you so much for uh, sticking with me on this video. Um, I really enjoyed doing it. I love it when you find out something new in the platform that you didn't perhaps know before. Um, if you have any ideas or want any uh, other videos for me to record, uh, please let me know. Um, as I said at the beginning of the video, it's been a very busy period for me personally at the moment, so I haven't had as much time to put into uh, recording these videos. But I'll definitely say now, don't forget to subscribe and like the video, um, and I'll see you in an upcoming video soon. And last but not least, don't forget to pay it forward. Take care. Bye for now.